Today I want to present a uh, topic uh, that I called the, re the Rewarder. And I want to talk today about from a scripture that you probably already know. And, uh, but I want to focus on a little different detail of the scripture. And it comes from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. So we're going to read from Hebrews 11 verse 6 and it goes like this. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Today I want to talk a little bit about God who rewards. God who's, who, is, who has a nature of rewarding those that seek after God. Those that go after him. Those that commit their life to him. See, God says this, those that come to me must believe and what did he say they need to believe in two things. They need to believe first that he is, meaning that he exists, that God exists and second he says that he rewards. Now to me when I was, when I started meditating the scripture was kind of weird. I mean I could think of many different things that God could say uh, that conditions upon coming and pleasing him. Like maybe the first, first condition makes sense, you know, you have to believe that God exists. Obviously, if you want to receive something from God, if you want to have a relationship with God, first basic concept, first basic thing, you have to understand that He exists, He believes. So that makes sense. That we don't question. I, I hope none of you here be like, well, that's, that's you know, that's, that, that's confusing. But it's pretty straightforward. But the second thing, He says that I'm a rewarder. To me, I could think that God could say, you know, you have to remember that I'm holy. You have to remember that I'm righteous. You have to maybe uh, say I am love or whatever other characters. Why did God choose to say that two things that you need to remember, two things you need to believe when you come to me is that I am, that I, I, I exist and that I reward. And I begin to study that because I, I begin to look from Genesis to Revelation and I begin to notice that everywhere throughout from Genesis to Revelation God reveals himself and he makes sure that people knows that he's a rewarder. He comes to Abraham and he says Abraham I'm your shield and I'm your exceedingly great reward. He was telling Abraham, Abraham come follow me, come come walk before me and he makes sure to tell Abraham that listen when you do that I'm your shield, I'm your protection, I'm your exceedingly great reward. And throughout the Bible I can bring you scripture after scripture from Old Testament all the way down to New Testament, all the way to Revelation when Jesus said, I am coming soon and my reward is with me. I mean, God, why reward? I mean, my justice is with me or my, you know, my love or my, my holiness or whatever. Why? why the reward and today I want to spend a few, a few moments and I want to take you uh, through a few few things and just to show you why God wants to see why God wants us to see and regard and believe that he rewards those that follow him those that seek him and those that go after him do you want to learn today church yes. you know everywhere throughout the Bible uh, throughout the parables Jesus represents himself or represents father as a rewarder um, and I believe that as as a as a person that likes to give as a person that likes to give if for example here a person has a nature of giving he he looks for opportunities to give right he in his nature he gives a person a person that has a kind soul a kind nature you know we say oh, what a kind soul a person loves to do kind works right a person on a negative side that is a liar in a nature what he does or she does they lie or a thief in a nature what did they do they steal that's what they are when God himself he says I'm a rewarder he reveals his nature that means that God loves to grant you with great things that God loves to bless you that God looks for an opportunity to reward just like a giver looks for an opportunity to give and just like a kind person is looking to do kindness that's God's nature um, first thing I think I believe the reason why God wants us to see himself uh, wants us to see him as a rewarder is so that 
we he wants us to believe that he is not a taker but he is a giver have you ever had a, a situation where you heard or you heard somebody that said something about you said something about your reputation said something about your character that wasn't true for example somebody said that you were a liar and you know you didn't lie I mean it's offensive to you I mean it's it's your it's your character it's your name or somebody said that you stole something you took something without asking and you know they called you a thief and and but you know you didn't do such an act or you're not a thief it would offend you wouldn't it I mean you would take it personally you would take you would take it offensively correct I believe that many people have a view of God as a taker he wants to take your time he wants to take your money he wants to take your energy your effort he wants you to serve him see most of religions in the world uh, they demand something of of you they demand something they demand worship they demand they demand adoration they demand recognition and a lot of times when we come from the world we'll have that kind of mindset is that God is this big God and he demands things he takes things he takes my tithe he takes my offering God is the one that takes my energy and my worship my my concentration he takes you know because I have to come to church on Sunday and Wednesday and then I have to come on Friday and then I have to do a home group and then you know I have to be an example to all you know God I just give 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 and I believe God left it specifically in this scripture he said he who comes to me he needs to understand that I exist that I am and that I reward that I don't take but I give that I am a giver I, I honestly think that God gets upset and he gets offended when we have a perspective and a view of God that as God who takes God that only requires things of us I believe that the God is not a burden but God he came to lift our burdens he didn't come to give us religion to get a set of rules and load us up he came to give us relationship and he gave us he came to to lighten our burden so there was a story this there was a there was a, a lady Lisa and her husband and they, they had a successful business they were an oil business uh, in Mississippi they were drilling they had some chunk of lands here and there and where they were drilling uh, oil and then they were producing oil uh, selling oil and the business was doing okay and then for the uh, next couple of years and uh, the business started going down and so all of a sudden they start laying off people they start uh, they start letting go of people they start selling off even some of the equipment and they came to the point where they were facing bankruptcy the business completely stalled for a long time they couldn't find oil and and they were just they, they was just on, on, on the verge of bankruptcy and so one time as Lisa was flipping through the channel she came across uh Joel Austin's TV show and as soon as she would start listening to to the message she really got encouraged then next time they tuned in with her husband and they start listening and they really got encouraged and they said you know we need to fly down there and we need to be there at the service so they booked a flight from Mississippi down to Houston they flew there they were there they came there on Saturday they were there on um, on, uh, uh, on Sunday service and then after service they flew back and in their heart they felt like you know what we need to make this our home church we need to keep coming so every single week they booked the cheapest flight that they could from Mississippi, Mississippi where they were living and they flew on Saturday rented a hotel stayed at the hotel went to the service and after the service they were greatly encouraged they would go back and go back to their town go back to the city and that and that kept going for some months and as they were doing that as they were staying commitment that was a sacrifice for them they barely had any money but they stayed committed to God they stayed committed they, they God saw their sacrifice one time when they came they really got encouraged they came back they got back home um, he, the husband just felt this unction of the Holy Spirit he felt this prompting to drill in this specific land to do, dr drill in this specific place and they came, and he started to drill he hired the workers they took out a loan and they started drilling they drilled one hole they drilled two holes they drilled, they drilled five holes and they drilled 10 holes nothing but deep down inside he says I know I know I received something God will honor us for the sacrifice that we made uh, we will find oil in this lane land they continue up uh, on going to um, to the to the services in the meantime continue to fly they drill 20 holes 25 holes 30 holes 35 holes and nothing 
and so his workers starting like you guys you're crazy I mean how many more holes are you gonna drill in this place I mean it can only go so far I mean you're wasting all your money I mean look we don't mind we're working for you his friends started uh, that were in the same business said hey buddy are you okay why why are you dr uh, drilling so many times you know there's nothing there that this land is done but he said no you know what deep inside of my heart God put it when I was there that I need to drill he drills 40 times he drills 45 times nothing drills 46 times 47 times and 48 they strike oil and now no they don't take commercial flights over to Houston they have the private jet and they're flying every single day uh, every single service there and and come back here for Monday to do business they honored God they committed they sacrificed and God honored the decision God is not a God that takes God rewards God is a giver I want you to get a bright perspective number two I think uh, the reason why God wants us to see him as a rewarder is so that we have right perspective of him like I already mentioned is that nobody likes to view nobody likes you don't like if somebody views you in a bad light if somebody sees you as a thief as a as a person that always takes as a nagging person a person that always you know you've had some of those friends uh the type of friends are when you go out oh and I forgot my wallet you know don't raise your hand okay we all have those okay I forgot my wallet and every single time when you go out somewhere they always forget their wallet okay you know uh we don't like not not necessarily don't like those kind of people but you know what I mean okay they just get a little burdensome I don't want you to see God is that every time you go out do something for God that God only takes God specifically left this in the scripture and, and he specifically throughout the Bible he mentioned and he always reminded us that he is a rewarder anything that you do for him uh, disciples came to Jesus and they said Jesus we left our homes we left our families we left all things behind what are we going to get in return Jesus said that in this life you're gonna get more houses more cars I'm paraphrasing obviously uh, you're gonna get more more friends more family members you're gonna get more but how much more in eternity Jesus told the disciple listen I'm not a taker I'm a rewarder those that follow me I believe that the right perspective produces right uh, right uh, expectation when you have an expectation when you have perspective that God rewards for everything that you do you will have an expectation you will have an expectancy to wait and expect your reward expectation is simply an expression of your faith expectation is a breeding ground for a miracle see if you go with the kind of attitude that God always takes God you know I I have to do this for God I have to do this instead of I get to do it I have to go to church I have to go to prayer meeting I have to do home group I have to go to home group then you you create this kind of negative expectation that it's always give 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 but I really never take back and therefore you don't have an expectation you don't have this awaitance on God that God is waiting to reward me for what I did God is waiting to reward me that every time I get up and more uh, and spend time with him God is waiting to reward me for every time I do something for his name's sake God is waiting to reward me every time I sow my tithe every time I help somebody in need every time I pay some I pay for somebody's guest buy somebody lunch God is waiting to reward me when you have the right perspective you will have expectation and expectation is an expression of your faith the reason why another thing why I believe what God wants us to expect a reward see God created us so he knows who we are how we function and he because he created us that way I believe that and I'm not going to go too much in psychology you can read that more uh, on your own and do some study but in psychology there's such a thing is that you reward a behavior that you want to repeat okay let me break this down to you uh, when uh, Ileana was born and uh, she was about two months or about about, uh, about there and uh, I decided to teach her how to hold her own bottle and feed herself okay so no I'm not a cruel dad I was just I was just experimenting a few things I had to you know I had to have some kind of example so the way I did it is this is that I gave her a bottle 
put her hands on it I gave her the bottle and she starts sucking it and whenever she let go of the hands obviously the bottle would fall so I would wait for a few minutes you know to see you know she's looking for a bottle she's looking for a bottle trying to find a bottle and there's no bottle and then I would take again the bottle put it in her hands and bring it to her mouth and she'd hold it and again let go and then it would fall and so by this what I was teaching is that I was teaching behavior behavior of holding the bottle the reward was the milk right and so she understood after some time that if I hold the bottle I get to drink the milk for a little bit longer okay and so sure enough it worked okay from probably about two months or so three months she was holding her bottle on her own people are actually our friends were surprised it's like she holds her bottle already yeah a few, a few experiments it worked uh, <clears throat> the other time uh, the other time when she just started walking about eight months or so uh, we taught her to throw away her own diaper in the garbage okay so how did we do that we we gave her the diaper and we led her to the garbage we helped her toss it into the garbage and we went yay she get all excited and we'll give her a treat and so after about a dozen of those times <laughs> no it sounds cruel okay but look it works it works okay <laughs> After some time, you'll get my point here if you haven't got it already. After about a dozen of times, she was more than happy to take her diaper and throw it in a, throw it in a trash bin. Okay. And right now, she even learns a few words. So she goes, ew. I was like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? And she takes it and she goes and sometimes, sometimes the door... The, the, the drawer they're locked we have we have a little rubber band so she doesn't go and, and go in there and try to take out things that she shouldn't and it's like and she'll call us and to make sure that she sees that we put the diaper in the in the trash bin and we go yay and she's happy Woo! and what happened is that we rewarded the behavior that we wanted her to repeat see God created you and me and he understands how we function he created us to function this way that's why he said I'm the rewarder so by rewarding the good behavior, God reinforces that. God encourages us to continue to live in character, to continue to live in pursuit of Him, to continue to live in seeking Him, in dependence on Him, to continue to serve Him, to continue to serve people. Because God is the reward and He knows if I reward His good behavior, her good behavior, it will be repeated once more. I believe God wants you to see today I want wants, wants you to see him as a rewarder. I believe that God wants you today to recognize that he's not a taker. That he sees everything that you do for him. He sees every time you're in the background and you're not noticed and you carry the load. He sees it. Every time you put work in and maybe it doesn't get recognized by your boss. It doesn't get recognized by your leader. It doesn't get recognized by your pastor. That he's looking at that moment is he's waiting to reward you. That's why Jesus warned the Pharisees. He said the fact that you go around and pray in the corner streets and, fa and you fast and you let, people that you, that you let people know that you fast. He said you already received the reward. He said but if you do it secretly, if you do it for me, if you do it with quality, if you do it with integrity, if you do it, if you put your best in it and expect me to reward it. He said what's done in private will be rewarded in public because I am God and I cannot deny myself and I'm God that rewards. I want you to change your perspective of God and begin to expect God to honor your commitment to honor your dedication to his kingdom, to a relationship with him, to the local church, to what you do for him everywhere you are in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Um, Apostle Paul says in 1st Corinthians chapter 9 uh, verse 24, he says, run the race in such a way that you might get the price or reward. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 Apostle Paul also who at least we believe it was Apostle Paul who wrote it says let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily ensnares us I believe that there is a thief that's trying to rub us rub you of your reward and Bible says he is devil himself and he is looking how to steal Bible says he came to steal kill and destroy and one of the tasks that he's trying to do is to steal the reward that you so earnestly working for you so earnestly ex expect and the way he does we just re we just read in Hebrews 12 1 is he does he does it by two things he the, the way he steals your reward is by sin 
or by weight that Bible says easily ensnare us. Let's talk about sin. Sin, while it might offer something with you, to you with the right hand, with the left hand it will take everything that your life depends on. It will rob you of your, uh, of your reward. It will rob you of your price. Sin is poison. While it might taste good in the beginning, but at the end it kills you. So if you have something in your life, whether it's lust, whether it's some kind of addiction, whether maybe disobedience to parents, maybe mistreating your spouse, mistreating people in your life, maybe um, you know uh, lying or cheating or, or whatever it might be, whatever sin it is in your life, you have to get rid of it because it will steal your reward. Satan is a thief. That's his nature. God is a rewarder. That's his nature. He wants to reward. He wants to give. Satan, he's here to steal. And the way he steals from your life is he puts some cigarettes. He puts some alcohol. He puts a little bit of partying. He puts a little bit of uh, uh, mistreatment. You mistreat your spouse. You mistreat your, uh, mistreat your kids. And he brings sin into your life so that he can trap you. And so that he can steal the reward that God has for you. You have to catch the thief. Kick him out of your life. Get rid of sin. So that you can enjoy the blessed life that God has for you. Now that's, that's pretty clear for us. And I'm sure most of us that we understand this. But there's a second thing Apostle Paul says. That there is the weight that weighs us down. And he says you have to run the race to get the prize. Now the weight can be many things. It can be fear in our life. That's stopping us from moving forward. It can be anxiety. The weight can be the laziness, lack of motivation. The weight can be lack of focus or negativity or bad habits. They're not necessarily sin, but they're just things that are keeping us down. You know, watching too many Netflix shows, spending too much time playing video games. Instead of reading a book, you know, we we watch some nonsense on on on, on, YouTube, uh, on YouTube and all this stuff like. You know, some that one of the memes uh, that's going around. He said, started, started looking for a apple pie recipe. Ended up watch, uh, ended up being convinced that 9/11 was a conspiracy theory. <laughs> okay, that's that's kind of how it is with our lives. That weight that easily ensnares us. You know, we spent half a day figuring out who got traded to what team. And look, I'm, I'm I like all this stuff, and it all has its place. It all, all has its a whole all has its time. But sometimes we don't notice how it takes two to three hours. You know, make sure we catch up with basketball. Make sure we catch up with NFL. Make sure we catch up with uh, with Kardashians and whoever uh, join us and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, we wonder why we lack focus, why we lack motivation, why we lack why we lack the determination to reach the goal, reach the price, reach that that thing that God has for us reach that business reach that opportunity that God has for us because Apostle Paul says that there is a weight that ensnares us that slows us down to run the race and if you're going to run the race Apostle Paul says run it so that you can receive a price at the end run it in such a way run it with an endurance run it with a persistence run it with the consistency so that when you're done running you get your crown you get your prize God can say good faithful servant here is your reward lay away the weight lay aside the weight put away the sin so that Satan has no access to your life so that Satan has no access to your life but without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him I encourage you be a diligent seeker be a person that is committed to God commitment to God always pays off commitment to God always pays off commitment to God will get you through hard times in life commitment to God love for God will get you through the most difficult times in your life and it will get you to the blessed life see in order to get the reward you must meet the demand of the reward have you ever seen one of those lost lost dog poster somewhere in the neighborhood and it says you know lost dogs and so a description of it and it says reward of two hundred dollars five hundred dollars right if you would go up and look for the dog around you didn't find and then you come back to come back to the owner and say hey I saw the poster I looked for your dog give me the reward you'd be like well where's the dog you say well no I didn't find a dog but I went around these neighborhoods and I looked for it people would be like get out of here okay what, what's wrong with you right but God says, I reward those that seek me. 
you don't have he said he 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 doesn't say that I reward those that find me I reward those that that uh he says I reward just for you making an effort to come to church just for you making an effort to come to come to morning prayer to make it your home group or to do home group come into leaders meeting spending time with God taking time to talk to somebody about Jesus sharing the gospel God says I will reward you you say but you know I talked to them about Jesus didn't get saved God says no it doesn't matter to me I'll deal with them that's not your business I reward the fact that you tried see everywhere else in the world come on let's put our hands together for Jesus come on everywhere else in the world you get a prize for competing and winning God says I give you a prize for just for you being in the race just for you running your race seeking God is the demand blessed life is the reward seeking God is the demand blessed life is a reward God is not a taker he's a giver he's the one that can bless you beyond what you can think or you can imagine he's the one that can give you a successful marriage he's the one that can give you a successful business he's the one that can give you a successful career God is the one when he rewards no, no one can match his reward when he rewards no one can come close to what he can give you in Jesus mighty name seek the reward not a reward uh, seek a rewarder not a reward make a priority to see God make God your number one priority make God the one that your soul longs for uh, David says that my soul thirsts for you my soul longs for you no wonder God has called him a man after his own heart you know when Ruth came out and she was a complete heathen she didn't know anything about God but she decided to leave with Naomi and she said Naomi your God will be my God I'll do what you want me to do and because she made Naomi's God her God Bible says in Ruth chapter 2 verse 12 that she received full reward God does not abandon God doesn't forget God doesn't leave those that put trust in him God says that I have not Bible says that I, David says actually I have not seen a righteous forsaken forsaken or his children begging for bread may God make pleasing God your number one priority Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 he says seek the kingdom of God first and everything else will be added to you serve God serve his people remember God is the rewarder you know um, I come from a very large family my grandma comes uh, my grandma had uh, 16 kids uh, and when they were growing up uh, in it was back then in the Soviet Union times it was already difficult as it is economically wise but even worse because they were Christians and because they um, because they believe God a lot of social programs were not available for them a lot of things were disclosed for them and and because having a big family was much harder to provide for them and their neighbors and other people they told them you guys are crazy you have a lot of kids and you believe in some kind of God or you getting persecuted for you and your kids you will starve to death there'll be nothing out of your family but lo and behold when you put your trust in God God never abandons you yeah did they go through difficult times yes they did did they go through hard times yes sure they did but God saw them through all of it and today if you look at the family family is big family is 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 well put together you see people uh, in the family are serving God with there yes there was some few troubles on the way a few things but if you look at all the kids are serving God and everything is well they're doing well financially they have their own businesses today we live in, in America we're enjoying this land and if you look at those neighbors around on left and right that condemned and said you and your God and your children will starve to death and if you look at their families they're destroyed by alcohol destroyed by drugs some of the kids already died from overdose and there's nothing of them when you put your trust in God God will never abandon you will never leave you will you go through hard times yes will he use the hard time to shape you mold you prepare you to produce quality character in you yes but at the end he always and always rewards those who seek him I'll finish with this story I had a permission to share from Estevan Estevan he's in my home group and he came about a year ago to our church and he came to my home group and was uh, you know I, I had a privilege and I still am to disciple him and 
and talked with him and he just re uh, prior to that recently graduated got a degree in this very good job that pays very well but for a very long time he couldn't find a job so he got to the point where he depleted his savings even uh you know waiting trying to apply for different jobs going to different places and uh you know things just were not looking not looking so well uh for him and he was he would come to me and be discouraged and say you know what i don't understand you know i'm praying i'm tithing i'm giving even about my tithe and I, I see my friends applying for the same jobs and they're complete heathens they don't want anything with god they don't do anything with god and they got the job over me and then i applied there and then somebody else that i know they got a job over me he said look don't get me wrong i'm happy for them they're good people you know they do the best that they can but you know it's kind of getting discouraged because I come here every single morning I spend time pray you know I do my best to see God and I tithe and I do all these things why is it not happening and I can I kept encouraging I said God uh, I said Esteban look God will always stay faithful I shared some testimonies from my personal life from other people's life I said look hold on to God continue to do what you do continue to come to pray continue to tithe of a little that you have and God will come through you know fast forward until two weeks ago you know he calls me and says or texts me and says listen I just want to tell you that I got the job that I've been really wanted that I've been praying and it's been really good and I have it's a government job it has a lot of benefits it has all these great things and I'm starting at the entry level and it's already good pay and I have so much more room to grow come on let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ acknowledge God in all your ways and God will make your way successful that's what Bible says put God first in your life make him a priority seek him diligently see the word seek means make it vital make God vital in your life make him your very breath make him your very existence make God a person that you can't live without and I can promise you that with God you live a better life than anybody else out there in Jesus' mighty name. Have you received something this evening?